Hi, I'm Frank. Have you ever been out on your boat and it starts to get dark when you're coming in? Or maybe you just wanted to do some night fishing? And when you come in, wouldn't it be nice to have some headlights? Well, now you can. And you can have them that look great and are meant for the boat. Because Sea-Doo has now made available docking lights for the boat. I'm going to show you how to install them. So the docking lights are will come in a complete kit and there's nothing really else to buy except for the um, cable to uh, to split power. Unless you have an extra power port under your console you're going to need to get an adapter. Uh, those are pretty easy to come by and uh, I'll provide all the links below. So there you can see the part numbers um, and yes it is $300 but uh, I think it's going to be a nice addition. Now instructions are not included in this box so you're going to need to go online and download the instructions. When you go to the instructions look at the very very bottom when you're online and it'll say template.pdf and you're going to need to print that because the lights are going to go right here. Here's one and the same thing on the other side. So that's where we're going to mount them and there's a template for that that, um, that you're going to need. To install the dock lighting towards the bow of the boat we need to remove these corner pieces, these two floor pieces, those floor pieces all the way up to the center console and where I have that cover panel removed that needs to be removed. So we'll have a, a, a straight opening underneath that starboard side of the boat and along the forward side of the boat. To take these floor panels up and each of the corners is a little tab that you're going to remove and then there's a 10 millimeter screw that you're going to unscrew. To make faster work out of this, I recommend that you get a cordless drill. I'm using a uh, Milwaukee, um, just a regular Milwaukee screwdriver, because basically that goes a lot faster than doing it by hand. Make your life easy, don't lose your screws. I'm using a pool strainer, but a box will do. Uh, all of the screws are going in there. So now when it comes time to put things back together again, I don't have to go looking all over the place. Um, I put them in right when I take them out, so I don't lose any. Nothing worse than getting done with a job and finding your one screw short, or one screw too many. And we're going to need to route the switch, the instructions call for putting it here, so I'll need to take this screw off and lift this panel up so that I can route stuff down in there. Now that this piece is out, I can reach up underneath here and lift this up. Uh, the cover piece that's on here, you can see these little tabs. You can just reach up underneath here with your finger, push the tab in and push one side out, then up around and push the other side out, and that will give you access to that panel. If you want to put it over on this one, you probably can. Uh, I'm not doing that, mostly, mainly because the instructions tell me to put it here, and I generally like to follow instructions. I may like this side a little bit better, but I'm going to go with what the instructions say. I started by routing the cable through here and then I went to the larger opening on the side here. It's not very far, you can reach up and grab it and then I'm going to be bringing, bringing the cable along here. I'll be tie wrapping it but I'm not going to tighten the tie wraps until I get everything done. I don't want to tighten things down and be too short or something like that. You can see they provide plenty of cable, so you're not going to run short. This is a 21 foot switch, 
So if you have a, a shorter one, then you're not going to run into any difficulties at all. In the uh, forward starboard side is where I wrapped the excess cabling. There's one of the connectors, ran it under here. I tie wrapped it to the um, nav light um, cable that's running. So I try to follow that under there and then over to this side. I'm going to use this uh, SeaDoo accessory extension cable and I've disconnected this connector right here and that goes to the courtesy lights on the um, that are up here. I connected one end of the cable there into that connector and then the uh, other one will go to this. Now I have, this is the um, fuse for the headlights. This is the power connector. And this is the other end of my pigtail that I'll put the two in. And then I'll just tie wrap the fuse to this cable. You can tie wrap it anywhere. So the templates will show you left and right side. You'll go ahead and cut that out and uh, tape it to the boat where you're going to be uh, installing it. You can double check your uh, measurements if you need to. I aligned my template where the bottom here is along the bottom of this little uh, angle and this edge here there and this cups underneath here so I aligned that. Now I'm going to take my uh, the uh, rubber and place it up here just to make sure that everything fits properly. It doesn't hang down too far, it doesn't go up too far so that everything will fit the way it's supposed to. Now once I have that I'll go ahead and drill my holes. Stand back and look at it also make sure everything looks good. Remember, measure twice, drill once. Six holes are quarter inch. So you're going to drill quarter inch holes. It drills through this stuff really easily, uh, but be sure to apply pressure to your drill to keep the drill from spinning out in a different direction. And the center hole is three quarters. You're going to end up then with a dremel to cut the rest of this out. Now to get in here, I'm going to be using a um, Milwaukee uh, rotary and we'll just cut this section out. The light will go through that hole so you can see that, that that's the uh, electrical connector and then the two retaining bolts. So that's what we need to cut out and make sure it fits uh, in there properly. It probably doesn't really matter, but I put this end up because underneath this the BRP letters are straight up so I've got my rubber gasket and line it up with the holes and put it in. Now we're going to bolt it in from the inside. We use these bolts and there are washers that come with it and there is a torque specification. It's four and a half Newton meters. And this fits in there very nicely. It's a nice tight fit. Be sure you have your rubber gasket on and seat it. Now we're going to go to the inside and um, tighten it down and put our connector on it. Under the front you can see the two bolts coming through and the connector. So we're going to tighten the uh, bolts to four and a half Newton meters. I'm going to use a torque wrench and then we're going to snap the connector in and that side will be done. I do use a torque wrench. This is one that's small enough to get down to four and a half Newton meters. Some of the larger ones uh, won't, won't uh, torque that low. So I have uh, this one that, uh, that does. So I have it torqued to four and a half Newton meters. I'm getting ready to plug my uh, cable in. 
I'm going to apply some dielectric grease to the inside so that I can have a nice uh, seal. I have uh, disconnected my power. I don't want to have any power on while I'm messing with this. Not that 12 volts is going to do anything to me, but I don't want to accidentally short something out. So I'll do it without power. And then I'll just plug this in. We'll finish it up on the other side. Put our uh, uh, decking back in and we'll be done. And you can hear it snap into place when it's fully seated. You can hear it and you can feel it. So remember these little tabs go up. If that's how you place that in the, uh, when you install the light itself, then make sure that those go in. But there's only one way it'll go, so you should be good. On my port side, I couldn't get that snap on the connector. So I didn't take enough of the material in the center where the connector is off. So I'm going to have to take this uh, off. Now, I put a piece of tape over the front because as I undo the uh, bolts to hold it on, this may have a tendency to just fall completely off and then shatter on the pavement below. So I'm going to put a piece of tape to keep it in place and then I'll take my screws off and widen my opening. All right, the final step is going to be to put the switch together with the connector and plug it in. I'm going to apply some dielectric grease and then uh, plug this in. You have the two pieces um, connected and it's nice and flush. The next thing you want to do is insert this and pay attention to which way it goes. This is incorrect. This is correct. So you have low beam and then regular beam. This isn't, if you turn it around this way, it looks like it's a high beam, but it's not. That's the low beam. So insert it this direction until it snaps into place. You can check it under there, make sure it's all nice and flush. And your installation's complete. Let's check it out. There we have the finished installation. It looks pretty cool. It was made for it, so it's good that it looks like it was made for it. And uh, now we just need nighttime to see how bright they are. All right, there are my lights. It's dusk, so it's still just a little bit hard to see how bright they're actually gonna be at night, but they look pretty good to me. All right, here we are with the lights off. That's low beam. High beam. I should be able to see pretty well pulling into the dock at night. Uh, all in all, I think the uh, lights do an adequate job and I'm uh, pretty happy that I installed them. It's an easy install, so if you want to get some uh, uh, dock lighting on your boat so that you can pull in at night, I think this is a, uh, a good choice. See you on the water.